Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. We're here. We're queer. We're coming for your children. I saw the most disturbing video. It was the Pride Parade in New York. This is the problem, everyone. And I thought I must come and share my thoughts because too often people don't speak up. Why don't they speak up? Because this culture has brainwashed us to believe that political correctness is kind, that our tolerance for other people's behavior is kind, that we should be tolerant of everyone, that their truth is their truth. Our truth is our truth. Live and let live. Good luck if that's how you're going to live when you have that face-to-face moment with Jesus who looks at you and says, come on, why weren't you helping me protect the little ones? I'm going to share my Facebook post, which clipped two videos, one of people saying, we're here, we're queer, we're coming for your children. If you don't think that's evil, I don't know what is. The second one is men and women, adults, riding bicycles naked, putting their junk in kids' faces. And you can see all the little children lined up on the side of the street, sitting down on the curb. What parent in their ever-loving mind, would ever bring their child to one of these events. It's the parent who believed in the culture of tolerance, that if we don't go and support this, we are bigots and right-wing extremists, racists, whatever, all the labels that they're going to label us as. Look, I am not going to look at Jesus and say that I did not do my best to fight for those little ones. And sometimes the parents need as much shaking up as the actual people who are living this lifestyle and think it's okay to bring children into it because they think it's okay. They don't think that what they're doing is an abomination to God. But we know that it is exactly that because the Bible tells us so. The Bible also tells us that if any of us causes a little one to sin, it'd be better if they had a millstone around their neck and thrown into the sea. Well, we are causing little ones to sin by not speaking up. We are complicit. This silence stuff is not going to fly anymore. We are in a war, people. We have got to speak up. Those poor kids and their misguided parents, in some cases, some are truly evil, And some are forcing this on their kids. I know darn well that there are parents who want their children to be in this, what they call minority, so that they could be supported 
and different. Some parents are shoving their kids into this lifestyle for sure. But even so, they don't know any better. The mirror neuron is happening. These kids are seeing nakedness of adults flashed in their face. How does that not impact you? How does that not have you think that that's okay? It is just like when I was 11 years old and I saw a porn flick in my own house, mind you. I watched it over and over and over again. How did that impact me? Well, it warped my entire sense of what the purpose of sexual intercourse is. It warped my entire view of a relationship, and I didn't even know what love was. I thought I had to do certain things to be loved. I cannot imagine if I saw people cutting off their penises and their breasts and trying to be another sex. I cannot imagine exposing my young self to that as well. How confusing. Come on, if we don't speak up, God is not going to be happy. Okay, so let's sit there and think about the worst thing that can happen. What if you got a trans person in your family? What if you got a trans family and a kid that's going through this issue? Doesn't matter. Speak up. You can still love them. We are called to share the gospel. Our mission doesn't change. We're supposed to call out all sin, no matter if it's cheating, stealing, adultery, pornography, or this horrific sexual immorality. And we're supposed to be calling it out on our straight friends too, and the people who are who we know who are having affairs. I mean, this is the walk. It's not just this trans ideology that's out there. The worst thing that can happen, people get mad at you. I would rather have a thousand, a hundred thousand, a million people call me names and get mad at me, disown me, don't talk to me, than I would Jesus to be disappointed in me. You can point things out without judging. You really can. And how do you do it? You put the Bible verses in there. Because then you lean back on the word of God. You're not saying the message. You're just saying, look, this is an abomination. Whoa. I'd be careful, people who are out there, those who cause little children to sin. Watch out for that millstone. We're trying to warn them with love, not judgment. It's the difference between an attack on the person and an attack on the sin. So as we see things floating around out there in social media that we agree with, but we're afraid to share it, that is the time that you say no. I am not going to let Satan, because that's who it is. God is not saying don't share this. God is saying, come on. Get courage. Ask me for the grace to give you the courage to send this out. I remember the first time God wanted me to share my marijuana addiction with everyone. I did not share it when I first came out in my ministry. Why? Because I wasn't detached from the world. I didn't have that grace yet. I was way too concerned about what you people would think about me. So I just kind of said, yeah, I partied real hard, but I didn't tell people that I woke up and smoked marijuana all the way throughout the day into the night for 20 plus years. I didn't say that. But when God asked me to, I did it. I put it out there and then I had the moment of regret, that vulnerability hangover the next day where I was like, oh boy, 
I put this out everywhere. It was on Our Lady of Guadalupe's feast day. And God said, hey, you have to give my mother credit. She's the one that took me, took you to me back in 2013 and healed you of this addiction. So get on out there in 2019 and talk about it. So I did. But I'll tell you, I freaked out the next day. (laughs) And thank goodness I had a spiritual companion that I called up and I said, oh my gosh, I am freaking out. What did I do? I thought that because I put that out there, that people wouldn't want me to come speak because they would judge me too much. But on the contrary, people gave me feedback that was beyond positive. Thank you for putting this out there. Back in the day, I came clean on my radio show with Christine Watkins. Find something more, find your way home. Her son came clean to her about smoking pot. She had no idea. So just that one soul was worth it for my humility to put that out there. That's all I needed. But then it came in from everywhere. And oddly enough, the most feedback that I received was from people that were in the business world out of the LinkedIn social media application. The last place I shared my addiction was on that platform because I knew how many people out there would know now (laughs) that they probably knew me high my whole life. It's not easy, but the more you do it, the better you are going to feel because you are standing up. And I'm telling you, people are going to be like, dang, look at her, look at him. Wow, I wish I had the guts to do that. And you know what? Courage begets courage, just like love begets love. All you got to do is share. Just get out there on social media and share it. You don't even have to put a comment in there. You could just share the other person's comment. Maybe even put like 100% or a thumbs up or something that you agree with that other person. And then when the blowback comes, relax. Don't freak out. Just say, look, I'm just sharing what God says. And then you could put a quote out there, you know, this is an abomination to dress like a woman and to lay down with a man and all this kind of stuff. What are they going to say? What recourse, what defense do they have outside of the Bible unless they say the Bible is false? Because I know there's a bunch of people, oh, all the different interpretations, blah, 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 blah. Or people will say, don't listen to the Old Testament It's the New Testament that matters. Well, there's plenty of verses in the New Testament too. Go ahead, use that crazy internet and search homosexuality, Catholic Bible, New Testament. It'll all come up. Just know the message. You don't have to know the verse. Know the message and say it with love. I feel that now is the time. I mean, now is the time. The last three years have been the time to speak up. But now, there's so much more truth coming out. There is so much that the conspiracy theorists and the right-wing extremists and all those Christian nationalists have said was fact back two years ago and is now truth. There was some Mark Twain quote, something like, the truth is halfway around the world. Oh, I'm sorry, the other way. The lie is halfway around the world, and the truth is still tying its shoes. It takes a while. But right now, we don't have time to sit back on our tongues and not say anything. So I hope that that this, excuse me, gives you courage. And that you speak out and you ask God for the grace to be the courageous Christian he's asking you to be. And it's not that courageous. Just hit share. Just hit post. Just hit send. And you're done. Okay, let's pray. I'm fired up this morning. (laughs) I am fired up because people are not thinking. And people are not standing up for God. People are not consoling Jesus's sacred heart. 
and for him I am sad. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come into our hearts. Put a fire in our soul to help protect the innocent children. Whether it be against abortion or this LGBTQ plus AI LMNOP agenda. Lord, those innocent children, they need your protection. Please pour your precious blood on them. Help us to remember to pray for the protection of the innocent, to pray for the reparation of sinners, and to also pray for those who are indifferent to Mary. Help us to sacrifice. Help us to remember that all of our little sacrifices and sufferings can be offered up. We can make them meritorious and unite them to you on the cross. Lord, if there's anyone in our families that is struggling with this agenda and this confusion, we ask that you give them clarity, that you open their eyes, you open their minds, you open their hearts and their souls, and that you move the spirit within them to see the truth, to see the lies, and to come back to you. Lord, give us courage because some that are praying right now have never spoken out. And I know that those who are listening have a heart that want to help you, that want to be your voice, your feet, your hands, your heart down here on earth. We know that's our calling. We know it's our mission to share the gospel. But some of us have never spoken a word. Shower your courage, your knowledge, your wisdom, and your loving heart down on each and every one of us so that we can fight for you down here. It's a big old spiritual battle, as you know, and we want to help and fight with the best tools and weapons that you have given us the precious blood of Jesus and the holy army of the saints, the holy angels, our guardian angels. So we ask Mary, grab our left hand, Holy Spirit, grab our right. Guide us and lead us today in exactly what you want us to do. Speak truth. Share the gospel with love. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those kids deserve it, everyone. And I don't have any children. It's crazy. I have never birthed a child out of this body. It's going to be one of my biggest regrets, I'll tell you that. But instead, God has made me a spiritual mom to people of all ages. (laughs) I coach people. I have a couple of clients who are in their seventies and I have a couple of clients who are in their twenties. So I sit here and I think it doesn't matter that I don't have children of my own. I know now what I would do as a parent. I am totally different than I was 10 years ago. So God has said, look, I've made you a spiritual mother to a lot of people, men and women of all ages. That's what all of us need to be looking at. Our brothers and sisters and those children out there who are truly being targeted. They're prowling around looking for the children's souls to ruin. It's time, everyone. All righty, I love you all. Go be brave and bold and courageous. You can do it. Maybe I'll do a video on it. And all you got to do is share it to all of your social media and you don't say a thing. I'm going to try, I hope it works, to 
put the link of those two videos so you can see them and be as horrified as I am. I also put a meme out there that said, they do not reproduce. They recruit. So keep that in mind. Anyway, go into the description of this so you can hopefully see what I'm talking about. And we'll go from there. Again, keep an eye out on my YouTube video. Maybe I'll do so. I'm going to. Forget it. I just made the decision. This is too important. I will be going on video to share that stuff. And then all you have to do, first of all, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just be in the public. It's free. Hit the notification, which is the black bell, so that you can get a notification every time I put out a new video. And then all you got to do is share it. Maybe that's all you do today is share it. But you did something. All right, everyone. I love you all. Find something more with God today. <laughs> Soul, mind, and body. Have a blessed and inspired day.